Just a few more flips of the pan, and these mussels will turn out superb. Hey, how's it going? Hang on a sec while I finish reading my great banquet. But please join me in my preparation. Mussels go great with just a bit of butter and a zest of lemon. You know, ever since I was a kid helping my uncle out in his restaurant, I wanted to follow in my family's footsteps to be a chef. But not just any chef. I wanted to be the best there ever was. It took a lot of effort to perfect my skills, and a lot more time to build my empire. It's not the destination, but the journey that counts. My journey started after graduation, when I went to see uncle. Through the tutorials, you will familiarize yourself with the basic aspects of running your very own restaurant empire. It is important that you pay attention to the animated arrows that appear on the screen, as they will point to important buttons or other tutorial subjects. If for any reason you would like to exit the game, press the Escape key any time to access the game menu. Left-click on the Next button to proceed. You can also hold your left mouse button on the tutorial window and drag the tutorial box anywhere on the screen. Go ahead and give it a try and then left click on the next button to proceed. Since this is your first taste of becoming a restaurateur, we will start easy and work our way up the ladder of experience. This will smooth out your learning curve. You will have your chance later on to grow your single restaurant operation into a multinational conglomerate. Left click on the next button to proceed. You are currently in the city view. You can zip around the city by moving the mouse to the screen edges or by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Go on, take a look around Gay Paris. Left click on the next button to continue. You can also look at the city from different angles and perspectives. Hold down the right mouse button while moving your mouse left or right. This will rotate the view. If you want to change the viewing perspective or camera angle, simply move your mouse up or down while holding down the right mouse button. To zoom in or out of the city, hold the right mouse button and press the shift key. Then move the mouse away from you or move the mouse toward you to view the city up close or from a distance. If you have a newer mouse with a scroll wheel, you can also spin the wheel forward or back to zoom in and out. While we're at it, let's look at some items on the top menu bar. There are two numeric displays to the left of the top menu bar. The display to the far left is the cash indicator. This shows you the total amount of money you have available. Left click next is the profit indicator, which shows you how much money you actually made in the past month. Be careful! If you ever see the numbers displayed in red, it means you are losing money. You should take remedial actions immediately before all your hard-earned cash is used up. Now let's go into your restaurant. The area indicated by the arrows is the restaurant indicator. Once you start owning more and more restaurants, you can use the square arrow buttons to cycle through the different restaurants in your possession. To enter Tres à Table, left-click on either one of the arrow buttons located to the sides of the restaurant indicator at the top of the screen. This is the interior view of your restaurant. If you ever want to leave the restaurant, Left click on the You can also double click on any restaurant that you own to enter. If you are ever doubtful about a button's function, simply mouse over the button or an interface element. A brief pop-up describing the button or interface function will appear. 
Extended help will be displayed if you mouse over the button a bit longer. Your customers like to look at interesting objects while eating. Decoration adds ambiance to the dining experience. So let's make your restaurant more attractive. Left click. You can see four large buttons. These are the main categories of items that you may place in your restaurants. There are seating arrangements, decoration, rooms and textures, and lighting and accessories. Clicking on any of these buttons will bring up that item category as well as their subcategories. Let's spice things up in this dismally bland restaurant now, shall we? Left click on the decoration button to continue. There are wall mounted, floor mounted, and tabletop mounted subcategories. For now, let's focus on wall mounted items. The button is already highlighted in yellow. Left click on the next button when you are ready for the next step. All decoration items have at least one attribute, and at most two. Some increase a restaurant's comfort rating, while others may increase the decoration rating of your restaurant. These are indicated by the corresponding attribute bars located right below the item description. Higher rated attributes are desirable traits, and the higher their ratings, the more they will benefit your restaurant's ratings. Choose an item to place in your restaurant now by now drag the object in hand onto the restaurant floor. While you're at it, place a few more items on the walls. When you feel you've got the hang of it, left click on the next button. Good going! Now that there are a few more items placed on your restaurant walls, let's see what we can do about the floor. Left click on the placing items on a restaurant floor is similar to mounting items on walls. Pick a few items that catch your fancy, then place them on the restaurant floor. When you are satisfied with the amount of decoration you have in your restaurant, left click on the next button to continue. You are obviously a quick learner. Remember, whenever you need help, you can seek me out. Simply left click on the Adventure Mode button at the bottom left corner of the screen. The Adventure Mode interface will appear. All you have to do after this tutorial is to locate my house on the location list and double click on my name, the one that says Michel Leboeuf's home. I will be waiting for you there so we can continue your crash course in restaurant management. See you soon! Well done, Armand. Now that you know how to decorate your restaurant, let's see what you'll serve your customers. 
This is a food establishment after all. Left click on the food menu button. Below the menu is the food menu interface. There are several buttons, but for now we will focus on adding recipes to your menu. I will explain to you the other buttons in further detail later on. Let's add a recipe to your menu now. To do this, you will notice that the food menu interface has been swapped with the recipes interface, the repository of all your available recipes. As you are just starting out, you only have a handful of recipes available. The five square buttons on the top of the recipe interface represent food course categories. Left click on the next button to continue. Below the food course buttons is a recipe pane of the recipe currently viewed, as well as its name. The recipe pane also has two round arrow buttons that can be used to go forward and back through your list of recipes. In this case, the main courses. Go ahead, try it now. Left click on the arrow buttons to cycle through your available recipes. When you're done, left click on the next. Notice the flag icons at the end of each recipe name. The flag icons indicate a recipe suitability for a certain cuisine. French recipes with French cuisine, Italian recipes with Italian cuisine, and so on. Sometimes, there is more than one flag icon for a given recipe. That means the recipe is aptly suited for more than one cuisine. Left click on the next button to continue. Now, instead of flipping through the list one by one using the arrow buttons, let's bring up the drop down list. Simply left click anywhere in the recipe name display. Give it a try. You will be able to view several recipes at the same time. You can also use the scroll bar to go up and down your list. There you go. Right below the preview box is another box with the recipe's description. The recipe descriptions give you an idea of what the recipe is made of and how it's prepared. Some recipes actually have some historical significance as well. Left click on the next button to continue. You will notice on the bottom of the recipe interface four large round buttons. These are from left to right, the duplicate recipe, the add to food menu, the view food menu, and the filtering toggle buttons. To add this recipe to your menu, left click on the add to food menu button. A pop-up to see your new recipe on the menu, now you're back in the food menu interface. The difference being, we have added a recipe. Now at least customers can order something. This is a rather spartan selection that you offer. Let's try to add some variety to the menu by repeating the procedure to add more recipes. When you are done establishing your menu, left click on the next button to continue. Make sure you are viewing the food menu interface for this next step. Notice on the food menu how arrow buttons appear on the bottom corners of the menu pages. Use these buttons to flip through the pages of your menu. Why don't you see what you have decided to offer your future clientele by left clicking on the previous page and next page arrow buttons. When you are done viewing the recipes in your menu, left click on the next button to get so far so good. A pop-up with a list of hot and cold beverages will appear. The cold beverages are further divided into alcoholic and non-alcoholic. All the beverages come with a fixed buying price, so all you have to do... In case you haven't noticed, I'd like to give you a word on alcoholic beverages. Let's tart up the menu design. There are three things you can do to alter your menu's appearance. You can change the title font, the text font, 
and the background design of your menu. You can also left-click on the text font and the background buttons to change your restaurant menu's appearance. Design your menu until you have customized its appearance to your liking and to your restaurant's suiting. When you are done, left-click on the next button to continue. There's only a bit more to go. If you ever want to view specifics regarding any recipe in your menu, simply double-click on the recipe name and you will be brought back to the recipe. Notice the default price on the recipe menu, which is your restaurant's selling price for that recipe. When you are ready, left-click on the next button to continue. The last thing I want to go over with you is on the food menu interface. So bring up, if you ever want to get rid of a recipe from the menu, say due to poor sales, then highlight the recipe in mind by left-clicking on the recipe name. Then, left-click on the Delete Recipe button located on the bottom of the food menu interface. The highlighted recipe will then be removed from your menu. Try this now. Excellent! You are becoming quite skilled at juggling recipes and menus. Now all you have to do is to properly set up your food menu for your new restaurant using the skills you have just learned in this tutorial. When setting up your menu, remember that variety is the spice of life. Try to add as many breakfast, appetizer, soup, main course, and dessert recipes as you can. This will give your customers a wide selection of offerings from which to choose. And don't forget the beverages! After you're done setting up your restaurant's menu, there's one last thing I want to show you before I feel confident to unleash you into the world of high cuisine. Meet me back at my house for your next crash course in becoming a restaurateur. You have added decoration and placed recipes on the menu. But who's going to take the orders? Who's going to prepare the recipes? Who's going to make sure the customers pay up? No man is an island. If you ever think about expanding and opening more restaurants, you'll need more manpower. So let's see how we can hire staff to assist you in your Epicurean exploits. Let's look into this now. The, apart from your name, the staff list is almost completely bare. That's understandable. You haven't hired anyone to work for you yet. There is a column of buttons near the middle right of the staff list interface. They are, from top to bottom, the switch to list mode, hire staff, raise or lower salary, transfer staff, and fire staff buttons. For now, let's concentrate on the hire staff button. Left click on it. Notice how the interface now displays quite a bit of information. Let's break this information down into digestible chunks, shall we? Let's start from the top of the interface and work our way down. Notice the two round buttons on the top of the interface. One depicts a chef, and another depicts a waiter. These are to switch between the chef panel and waitstaff panel. If you left-click on the waitstaff panel button, you will see that the displayed information changes to show relevant staff information. Any restaurant needs at least a chef to prepare the recipes, a captain for taking orders, a server to, well, serve the food, and a receptionist to show the customers to their seats. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
you need to hire a kitchen porter to wash the dishes. Go ahead and hire all these posts. No need to hire a chef when you've got your trusting self to work the kitchen. Once you are done hiring, left click on the next button to continue. A word on receptionists. They can only carry out their duties effectively if they have a reception desk handy. You can find a reception desk in the interior panel under Restaurant Lighting and Facilities. You remember how to place items to... This is also the ideal time to explain to you how to rotate, move, and delete items. Notice the two round buttons near the end of the interior interface? They are the Adjust Items and Delete Items buttons. If you want to adjust an item, simply left-click on the Adjust Items button. You will notice that the cursor changes to reflect this. Then, left-click on the item you want to adjust and move it to where you want it to reside. If you want to rotate an item, left-click and hold down the mouse button while you rotate the mouse. You will see the item rotate as well. Left-click on the... To delete an item, left-click on the Delete Item button. Then, double-click on the item you want to remove from your restaurant's premises. Left-click on the Next button to continue. Good! Now let's go back to the Staff panel and see what some of the other buttons do. Let's start with the List Mode button. Notice the two small icons to the right of each employee position, complete with rating bars right next to each employee's name. The metal icon represents a chef's reputation or staff's skill level, and the flag icon represents employee morale. Here you can quickly see who is low on morale or reputation. If you left-click on any one of these names, you will go back to the detailed view. Come on, let's try that now. Left-click on the person you hired as kitchen porter. Now you're back in the detailed view. Most of the buttons are now available. You should already be familiar with the first two buttons. The other buttons are Raise or Lower Salary, Transfer Staff, and Fire Staff. These buttons are relatively easy to understand. I'll let you play with these at your leisure. When you are done familiarizing yourself with these buttons, left-click on the next Good Going. You are just about ready to start taking orders in your first restaurant. Now, just be patient and customers are bound to come in. If you are impatient, you can always accelerate the game's speed by left-clicking on one of the four speed bars to increase or decrease the game speed. Go ahead, try it now. When you are done exp the round button to the left of the speed buttons is the Pause Resume Game toggle. Left-click the button to first pause, then left-click again to resume the game. There's something you should know about the speed settings and how time passes in the restaurant universe. In order to progress faster, a month's time is simulated based on your restaurant's performance at the end of the first day of each month. Left-click on the Next button to continue. Now I'd like to explain to you about the Information Center interface. This interface can help you better manage this and all your forthcoming restaurants. Looking at the column of buttons, we can see, from top to bottom, the Report Management, Report List. Now take a look at the top row of buttons. There are, from left to right, the Restaurant Ratings, Sales Report, Statistics, Income Statements, Financial Graphs, and Complaints buttons. Click on each one and familiarize yourself with the different types of information displayed. Left-click on the Next button when you are ready to continue. Now go back to the Restaurant Ratings button. This indicates how well your restaurant is faring in each rating category. The categories with pluses add points, while the minuses subtract points from your overall restaurant rating. Left-click on the Next button when you are ready to continue. 
Pay special attention to the environment and food category ratings. The higher your restaurant's value in these categories, the more likely customers will choose your restaurant. Provided, that is, you keep the price and complaints down. Do that, and you have a hit restaurant on your hands. When you're ready to move on, left click on the Goal button to continue. As you can see, the top row of buttons now displays the Game Score as well as your Scenario Goal buttons. Click on the Goal button. Remember your goals? Wow, all this restaurant managing has got me really hungry, Armand. But the good news is you now have all the requisite pieces to start operating your fully functional restaurant. Maybe someday your restaurant will not only be packed with efficient staff, but happy customers as well. Now off you go. Remember, your goal is to reach 35 customers with a monthly revenue of $30,000 within three months. Think you can manage it? I surely think you can. Good luck.